Well, hello everybody! Welcome back to G Bears Off Grid Ways, a homestead in the desert. And uh, here we are on December 8th, 2018. And uh, in case anybody was wondering, uh, Pierre from Heat Seeker Bus uh, contacted me and he's uh, going to be hanging out in Quartzsite a little while longer. And that's probably a good thing because uh, the weatherman lied today. When I checked the weather this morning, he said, uh, partly cloudy. Well, this is the sunset right now behind the water tank and uh, you can see the clouds in the sky over there and I guess somebody could call that partly cloudy except that's what we've had all day. All of that and rain and rain heavy at times. You betcha. And uh, there's a partial rainbow over there. That's because the uh, sun is able to peek through just as the uh, uh, sun setted. And uh, you can hear my generator running in the background. And the reason for that is, in the last three weeks, I checked it. And the total sunlight hours for three weeks, and this is not all at once. This is not seven hours in a row. This is an hour here, a half hour there. In three weeks, the total sunlight that I've gotten out here is seven days or give or take an hour or so on seven days worth of uh, uh, seven hour days and anyway that's all we got and and wind well there you go sitting still just a breeze moving the flag and that's it well without wind and without solar my batteries aren't getting charged so I'd mentioned before that they'd been getting down low. Well, they've gotten really low. I mean, uh, really scary low. So I am on backup power, which is basically the two-stroke generator that's running right now is only on 900 water. And what I'm doing is I'm charging batteries with it. Uh, with the um, two refrigerators and the uh, the router and the modem and uh, other things that run, like the uh, the gas stove has to be plugged in and it has a clock in it and uh, it's got an electron, electronic igniter and then the uh, microwave's got a clock in it and the coffee maker's got a clock in it plus a heating element, so forth and so on. So all the normal stuff that's running in there my uh, clock in the bedroom all use electricity so i've been seeing that battery get way down into the 11 7 11 8 11 9 and that's too scary so i i know that uh 10 6 is like the 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 death of the battery so i've been shutting them off at night and i'm running the generator now because I got probably 15 minutes of sunlight this morning and then another 10 minutes just before the sunset through that little blue section of sky right there. Otherwise, it's been behind that stuff all day. And I did get about oh, a half an hour's worth of uh, wind cranking that was uh, putting out 130, or anywhere from 60 to 130 watts on the... Um, KT5 up there and uh, just not enough to bring the batteries all the way up to full charge so they're not going to last through the night with the, uh, the all that electronics running in there so I shut everything down I actually shut off my uh, inverter that feeds all the electricity to the cabin and the containers and uh, so forth that's all all get shut down at night and it's cold enough so that uh, I don't have to worry about anything that's outside uh, spoiling. So in the front room without a heater running at night, uh, my beer stays cold and the refrigerator that's in that room doesn't need to run. And it stays uh, down in the 30s. So it's, uh, it's, it's staying and holding the, uh, the temperature and the food's not spoiling. So that's a good thing. But I'd sure love to get a few days of um, 
seven hours worth of sunlight or uh, even three and a half hours worth of sunlight with three and a half hours worth of wind. But I haven't seen any of that coming yet. And I don't know how long this weather is going to last. So generators running and that's what's going to be the uh, the norm for a while here and then of course I've got a bunch of those little Harbor Freight um, LED flashlights that they give away for free they, they got the free coupon all the time in the uh, the ads that they put out and I get them on my smartphone too in my email address so every time I go into the store I grab one of those I've got about a dozen left hanging around because I've given some out to friends who needed one and uh, from now on I'm just going to stock those things up. So I went in and I bought a pack of uh, AAA batteries so that I could replace the batteries in them when they they go dead and uh, I put one of those in each room I found something metal to stick it to so all I have to do is walk in the room press a button and I've got light in the room. So now you remember if I shut my inverter off that doesn't mean I don't have lighting in, in the uh, cabin because all my lighting in the cabin is 12 volt DC. I've got light switches in the wall just like you have in a regular house but I didn't tie those into the inverter or into the uh, circuit panel. Those are all um, just connected directly to the batteries. So uh, on those I can walk into a room and hit the light button if, if there's an emergency or anything like that I'll have light but I don't want to draw off the battery so I'm using the flashlights instead and that's working out pretty good for me. So lesson learned everybody for those of you who are um, just starting off grid or going to be going off grid uh, make note of this. Uh, there is going to come a time no matter how big your battery bank is Okay, mine is like 2,800 amp hours. Okay, that's a pretty good size a battery bank. And 2,800, 2,800 amp hours normally runs everything I need to run, and I always have extra electricity without a problem. But that's only if you have sunlight or wind during the day or night to keep your battery banks up to full charge. If the battery banks don't get up to full charge, as you start using all that stuff, it's using it from whatever you've got left in your battery. So it just keeps weakening them more and more and more. It's like having a low battery in your car and you keep turning the key to try to start it. But pretty soon it goes from a rum 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 to a rump rump rump. Okay, so that's, that's what's going on. So remember that. You're going to have to have a backup. Now, I'm running a little two-stroke 900-watt generator in there. And it's only good for a battery charger. So it's not going to do me a heck of a lot of good for charging the batteries up. If I'm running, uh, pump, pumping 900 running watts into the, uh, the charging the batteries, and I'm using 700 watts to run what I need to run in the cabin, well, I've only got, got 200 uh, spare watts, which is only two solar panels. And that's not going to take care of a 2,800 amp hour uh, battery bank. So uh, the numbers there are very important. Remember that stuff and be aware that if you're going to go off grid, you're going to need a backup generator. Now, I do have one. I used to have it on the back of that motorhome. And since I parked the motorhome and it doesn't drive on the roads anymore, uh, that's going to be... Uh, I took that off and I'm going, I put it inside and I'm going to turn it into a backup generator in its own little house right there next to the uh, battery room so that I can go out and it is an electric start. I can go out, turn the gas on, hit a button, boom, and I'm putting out 3,500 watts. Okay, so 3,500 watts is what I need. That's that's basically enough to run a household. Uh, if I put that out, then I not only can I charge my batteries, but I can also run everything that's in the cabin off of a generator. And um, I will be doing that. Uh, I'm going. I've got that inside of the container. I started building a rolling um, rack to put it on. 
and I got a five gallon gas tank for it. A problem with those things is because now with the uh, all the gasoline that you buy nowadays nowadays has alcohol in it, that's a corrosive, and you don't want to leave it sitting in uh, machinery or tanks that aren't used on a regular basis. So even if you put stable in there. That only gives you a little bit more time on it. It, it really does not save the the, uh, the system from corrosion and damage to your uh, system. So you have to drain that out and run the carburetor dry if it's going to be stored for a long period of time. Which means that it's not just ready in an emergency just to fire up. So I'll have it run dry in the uh, summertime and then in the winter time I'll put gas in it and then I'll just run it on a regular basis whenever the days are like this so, so that I don't have to worry about that problem and the damage and the stale gas uh, ruining my engine and also you got to remember that on those things you're going to have to do oil changes so prepare yourself with enough oil to uh, at least twice a year change the oil in your generator and I don't, the one I've got is an Onan, O-N-A-N, uh, generator. And it's made specifically for motorhomes. And it is a heavy-duty um, generator. I mean, literally, it, put, it only produces 120 volts AC. It does not do um, 12 volts DC. And the whole generator itself, uh, if you try to lift it up, I would say probably weighs somewhere in the neighborhood of... Uh, 900 to a thousand pounds it's a very heavy generator I use a chain um, lift to lift it up so that's uh, something that you have to consider everybody uh, thank you for joining me today I'm going to cut this one off now and go back inside because now that the Sun is set the temperatures are dropping very quickly and it's getting chilly out here so that's what I'm going to do I'm going to go get warm. And I'll let that uh, little generator run for another, oh, say probably another hour. Um, I get about eight hours of run on one tank of fuel in that thing. So that's not bad. But like I said, it just barely keeps up with my usage. It really does not um, give me any extra electricity. So I have to come in later and sh in about an hour. I'll shut that down. And I'll shut my inverter off so there's no electricity coming out of the batteries. So they can sit and rest all night. And then in the morning, I, I'll get up and I'll come out and I'll fire that up again until the sun gets up into the sky. And hopefully, the, the call for the weather tomorrow says that we're supposed to have some sun. And uh, then only 10 to 20% chance of rain uh, each day for the next 14 days. But uh, who knows? Geoengineers sometimes make them make liars out of their weather reporters because, like I said, today they said partly cloudy. And there's your partly cloudy right there. <laughs> and right there. And it's still raining over there. G Bear reminding you, give me a thumbs up down there. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And don't forget to share or save this video. G Bear signing off.